Peace everyone, Unmask Art here. Welcome back to another live critique session. Hope everyone's having a fantastic week. Friday is upon us, so it is the weekend. Anyways, I am going to just jump right into these live critiques. Uh, if you missed your opportunity to submit a project, uh, be sure to join the Unmask Family Facebook group. I have links for everything in the description. Um, and let's just get right into it. So first up is Linda. She has this lovely colored pencil project. And this was actually part of a project that we did over in the art club. And uh, the idea for the project was basically it evolved from sort of the inability to choose one particular reference photo and so we collected like four or five references and we came up with the idea of doing a project where I break down the process of uh, using a collective set of references to create a design somewhat tattoo-like um, and then uh, so sketching the design and then inking the design was another part and then of course coloring the design after that so this is a product of that sort of uh, series of mini projects over in the art club and the collection of references was two flowers a butterfly and a turtle and um, so this is her own original design that she came up her own colors and everything like that uh, and the the layout the composition and everything is really really cool i think that you did a fantastic job the colors that you selected uh, are fantastic um, i really like the way that you used the color of the water like you can see the color of the water in the turtle like under the head and um, the blue of the water influencing the colors of the turtle that's under the water and then you have a little bit of the turtle above the water it was a really cool way that you did that um, I think that uh, uh, the water actually so a few things that I think that you can improve on because you did everything like really really well so I'm just gonna get right into the things that I think um, maybe to consider in the future um, I know this is colored pencil. It's difficult to get things smooth, but you do want to try to get the sky as smooth as possible. That's just one tiny little thing, um, but I know that it's very difficult to do that. Uh, and then the other thing, um, the texture of the snail, you have like a lot of really cool texture in the turtle with all of the scaly kind of skin part. Uh, I would have liked to see you do that with the snail like if you just took this color and um, created those those sort of bumps that the snail has I'm going to do this very poorly really quickly but I think the snail would have benefited from a little bit of that texture I'm just going to basically do wavy cross hatches to create those those little bumps that snails have uh, this would have just brought in a bit more detail in the snail because the snail is quite big and I realize that it's not the main focus of the project but you have a lot of texture in the shell of the snail and then the snail itself doesn't really have any so I think that maybe the idea of just adding a touch of extra texture into the snail and you can see how sort of easy it is just um, creating these wavy cross hatches this wavy checkered pattern because uh, you don't have to get like super precise with the detail but just by doing a few few little lines with the same color I just kind of color picked to that brownish color that you have in the snail you can see that that texture gives him that snail like skin and so I think that would have benefited the snail a little bit the only other thing that I will um, recommend is you see how uh, you, you have these nice foreground objects great color by the way um, and then you have some of the seaweed what I think would have went a long way is also if in the background let me see what this color looks like it's a little bit too dark so let me just go brighter with it 
Yeah, I'll just use this color and then brighten it afterwards. So if you sort of created some of that texture in the back, this will make sense in a second, trust me. So this, this will give your picture a bit more depth. And I'm just kind of creating some random stuff because the, the one thing that I noticed is that the grass or the seaweed, it sort of just is a little bit too isolated. There's not enough of it. And so if you created some of it in the background, don't worry, this will all make sense in a second. It's a bit too dark of a value. Uh, but this, this would also add a little bit more depth to your foreground objects down here at the bottom. Let me just erase some of this color from foreground. Because basically I want to create like a shadow or a silhouette, actually. It's more of a, a silhouette in the back. And then I'll just take this color and just soften it a little bit. And um, you see how it kind of creates that shadow? And you can you can put other objects. So if I were to take um, if I were to take that color and add some of these seaweeds in the back as sort of a shadow, it creates just a little bit more depth and a tiny bit more detail. So some some seaweed in the back or whatever, uh, maybe even a fish or something. Fish in the back. Um, it just helps create a, another layer for the eyes to kind of see and adds more depth. So that's something that you might you you may consider. The other thing that I was thinking about is um, if you added the highlights, this is gonna look really really weird starting off. Uh, you know how the the ripple of the water shines down on the floor on the sea floor and it sort of has this sort of wavy checkered pattern look don't worry that i'll fix this in a second i just need to add a little bit of a blur to it sort of like this um, you may have considered doing this on the sea floor that gives it that sort of glowy water effect um, other than that uh, i really really like the way that you composed your image. I like that you added a snail. And um, the interaction between the butterfly and the turtle is really nice. Um, I think one other thing I'll touch on, um, the pupil of the iris, I think, I think this would have looked better if it was just round. If the pupil was round, it just um, looks a little bit more like an eye. I don't, the eye just looked a little, a little off. Um, but yeah, fantastic job, Linda. I, I really liked uh, this project of yours. So thank you for the submission. Up next is Shell. She did this beautiful uh, colored pencil project. Uh, let me quickly just uh, pause and say hello to everyone. Hello, Barbara. Uh, Ra Ress, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correct. Susan, Diane, Claire, Cherry. Uh, Asib, good to see you. Alicia, good morning. Uh, I am from Poland, by the way. Um, well, I live in Poland originally. I'm from the United States. Uh, but I assume that's what you were asking. Anyways, uh, so Shell, you, you have a fantastic color pencil composition here. Wonderful lighting. I really, really like the ground, actually, that the dancers are standing on. A uh, fantastic subject, by the way. I, I love uh, I love doing like full body portraits of people uh, dancing. In, in particular, I, I've always been really fond of like ballerinas. Uh, just like the grace that they show in certain positions. I don't know anything about ballet or anything, but um, I've uh, certainly admired like just the the grace that they show in their movements. And this is this is twofold with, with two people, so it looks really, really good. Uh, I'm not sure which paper you did this on. 
uh, but I can see some some of the paper texture. Uh, but it it looks it almost looks like a painting actually it, because it almost the texture almost looks canvas like. And I think you did a really really good job on like the values and just going as dark as you could. Uh, I think a couple of small improvements uh, can be made. Um, like right in here, I'm gonna be nitpicky because this is such a fantastic piece of work that I sort of have to be a little nitpicky to find anything remotely wrong about it. And I, I don't like to say the word wrong, but this line, I can see a little bit of this line. So if I just get rid of that, where the, the transition is, if that transition was just a, a bit softer, uh, and it's really just between this like white area and this light blue, uh, if it was just a tiny bit softer. Um, and then the main thing is actually the values on your people. The, as far as the background, the scene, the drop shadow, and the lighting on the people, that is spot on. But the uh, shadows on the people are not. Uh, you see how sharp and dark the drop shadow is? That tells you right there that these people are under a spotlight. And because they're under a spotlight, you see that when you when you go to their skin tone, like on the back of his hand here, you have you have a fairly dark color. Like it's not too crazy dark. It's not too crazy dark. That's a problem. Uh, because being under a spotlight, you're gonna have colors closer to this. And even as dark as that. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna try to sort of gently increase the values just on the people and try to build up that sensation that they're actually under a spotlight because right now the values on them just aren't dark enough and that goes for their clothes as well and i th you know this is part of the thing with doing skin a lot of people fear going dark um when it comes to skin but you can already see look at that arm now that i've darkened that shadow you can really start to see the shape of her arm and it really enhances the the light direction um, her face would be kind of darker as well, but I'm going to leave it uh, for the sake of her, her not having to like work around her face, fa facial features. Um, this leg would be probably completely dark, something like that. Sorry, I don't mean to zoom out like crazy, but um, you can see where you outlined the shadow on her on this leg. This would all be very dark. Uh, you don't want to be afraid of your your shadows because look at the difference here. Like right now, her she doesn't have a lot of form. There's no three dimensional quality to her arms or her legs. By darkening those shadows, and I know uh, going this dark can be quite scary, but you you see how much more her body stands out on the page. And then of course with her dress, uh, this is definitely not dark enough so by going darker on her dress as well now now she stands out look how much more like three-dimensional she is in comparison to the guy um, you could also do the same thing with the guy so I'm just gonna grab dark color and that's actually not even dark enough I'm just gonna shade the back side of him where the light wouldn't be really hitting. There'd be a drop shadow here, I imagine, from her arm. Just so much more shadow. Now this is sort of rough in the sense that I'm just, you know, sketching it on with color digitally with a mouse, but you can see that by increasing the contrast in the people, it enforces that light a lot more. And so that's something that you want to be on the lookout for. I, I assume that you used a reference photo for this. Uh, you, you didn't share the reference photo with me, so I'm, I can only speculate based on what I'm able to identify in the picture as far as what the shadows and the colors actually look like. But um, I have a hard time imagining that this isn't actually just closer to the reference photo considering the spotlight. 
The spotlight is very similar to the sun in the sense that it creates harsh shadows and the, they're missing the harsh shadows to reinforce that lighting that you've established. The other thing that you might even consider doing is taking uh, your light color and you can do this over top a bit is actually bring in a, a, a little hint of light in the background as well. You can bring this in and, and lighten up that corner. And now, again, you're just reinforcing this idea of this spotlight coming down. And instead of just this flat, black, uneventful background, uh, by splashing in this sort of lighter area in the upper right corner, you're just creating more direction, more drama, and uh, the viewer is identifying the light source much more clearly. Oh, hey there, Chandra. Good to see you. All righty. Uh, fantastic work. Great subject. You did a good job, Shell. All right. Up next is Lisa G. Uh, she did this beautiful watercolor piece. Now, I don't have a lot of experience with watercolor, so on a technical side of that, there's not a whole lot that I can give you. But as far as composition-wise, I, um, I think we can work with something here. Uh, I love the colors, really, really like the colors. Uh, the one thing that I wasn't 100% sure on with this project is the background here, um, because this almost looks, this looks like acrylic paint to cover a yellow piece of paper, um, but I could be mistaken. I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe the paper is like this cream or white, and then you use yellow, uh, watercolor to create this sort of glow around the subject um, and I'm not sure what the dots are the dots also throw me off a little so I'm not I'm not totally sure what's going on with this yellow part with the dots uh, but what I can say is it's not working very well with the image the dots just sort of stop where this glow starts and I don't know if that's paint splatter. Maybe, uh, maybe the paper was white. You painted this sort of yellow around your subject after you painted the subject, and then you covered your subject, and then you splattered random colors onto the yellow. And what I can say is, for compositionally, it's not working for a couple reasons. The first reason is that this yellow doesn't exist very much or it's it's not very it doesn't connect well to your subject if i were to change if i were to change the yellow to maybe maybe orange oops uh, yeah no i need to uh hold on one second let me do that is not what i want to do Hue saturation. If I change it more orange, I'm just getting rid of that color change on the actual subject. Now I feel like it works uh, because this, this sort of tan, orange, grayish exists more in the skin and it also sort of complements like the bluish green and the red a little bit. It kind of, it fits, it harmonizes with the colors that you used in your subject. Whereas the yellow, the yellow sort of leans toward the green side and it's not really it's, it's not really harmonizing with the colors. So um, that's one thing with the, the background. The other thing with the, the paint splatter, it feels weird for it to just stop cleanly uh, around this sort of halo effect of your subject. Um, and I think that it would look better, I can't replicate this, the, the paint splatter, um, 
uh, there's probably a brush for it, but I'm not going to dig for it. Um, I think it would just look better if the paint splatter was everywhere, even even if it hit her face a little bit, um, because it's paint splatter, it's sort of that artistic touch, and it works okay. So don't be afraid of paint splatter over top of your subject. Um, the other thing is the shape of this glow. The shape of this glow is also... also a little bit awkward as well for your subject because it doesn't it doesn't have any reason to stop where it does stop and it's see how much further away it is like over here but then it's like right up against the shoulder it doesn't make it doesn't make sense so if you're going to use like this gradient glow around your sub uh, your around your subject Try to make it a little bit more uniform uh, and, and try to make the shape somewhat symmetrical. So if you imagine maybe, uh, maybe an arbitrary shape like this around your subject and then it kind of goes up and, and domes sort of like this. Try to keep it somewhat symmetrical because then your subject will fit in there and it will just look a little bit better. Because if you if you have a shape like what you have, um it it doesn't it's not symmetrical. It's it's sort of it's just wonky and it looks a little strange. So just keep those in mind when you when you create glows around your subjects like that. Um you want to make sure that they're balanced because it's almost a composition within a composition when you make those glow uh, when you make those glows around the subject other than that color choice wonderful color choice um, like execution really good like the skin looks good great like makeup colors and everything um, the hair looks good like I I would say maybe try to uh, pinpoint the highlights a little bit in the hair so for instance, if I take this color and let's just um, go across the hair here a little bit, uh, you see the way when I, when I isolate those bright areas just a bit more, her hair immediately just becomes more shiny. So try to, try to do that, try to get those, um, those highlights a little bit more focused that way, uh, it just looks it has that sheen that you want her hair to have um other than that like i mean great job i'm the light source is a bit ambiguous uh, i don't know where the light source is it looks like it's from the top coming down here but considering how well lit the left side of her face is um you leave the light source a bit ambiguous so it's hard to tell where it is exactly but because of this shine on her forehead i can kind of get this idea that it's coming from this direction sort of like that um and if that's the case then you may you may uh need to consider going darker above above the eye on that side and even darker on the skin on this side of the face uh to create that light because it looks like you started to create it but you you sort of pulled back and you didn't go as dark as you should uh, again i know that going uh, dark in shadows on faces and skin can be intimidating but it makes a it makes a really big difference it makes a really big difference uh, other than that fantastic job i really like i really like this watercolor piece thank you for the submission all right up next is diane and this again is from the art club project where we were creating a design and then inking it and then coloring it and um diane she didn't I, I she told me she didn't really want to submit this one because she didn't like the way that it came out partially because she didn't like the paper she worked on and she didn't like the uh the lira uh colored pencils that she tested out on this project but in spite of those two things i think it actually came out quite cool it has a lot of character to it uh, really good use of colors and the way you 
the way you harmonized some of the colors is also uh, quite good. Uh, I think maybe this this red from this fish here hiding in here, which is adorable, by the way, like the wearing glasses. It is wearing glasses. I'm not going crazy, right? It is. It is actually wearing glasses. Um, this this red doesn't really show up anywhere else, and so it kind of makes this fish just stand out a little bit awkwardly. Um, that's fine, but all the other colors sort of work together, uh, whereas this red stands out, like I said, just a, just a little bit strangely. It's a great complementary red. I would have loved to see this red in this weird creature thingy over here. I'm not, I have no idea what this is. Um, but I would have really liked to see this red somewhere else to sort of balance out this, uh, this fish here. It's, it's a dorky fish, yeah. A dorky fish, but still cute. Um, I, like its, I like its smile, its little, little grin. Um, I'm going to assume your turtle is sleepy, although we already had that conversation. <laughs> um, nice, nice use of the colors and reuse, uh, like the pink from the flower and the blue from the flower into this uh, sort of seaweed-esque thing. Uh, it's really great way to incorporate those colors. Again, I would have liked to see either this pink or this red up in the butterfly in some way. Um, also, really cool idea by making the butterfly wings waves. I don't know if anybody caught that, but they look like waves to me. I'm I'm assuming that was intention uh, intentional, but um, yeah, it looks really cool. And um, this this creature, I have no idea what this is, but uh, it's it's interesting to say the least. And again, with the colors, I, it looks like some of the blue was used down here. It uh, looks like maybe a little bit of this pink red was used very lightly in whatever these things are and some of the, the details here. Um, the yellow, I don't know if you reused the yellow that you used from the turtle. I think it would have been better had you reused that red. Um, but let's let's talk about where you can improve aside from just a, a little bit of the color balancing as far as harmonizing the colors. Um, I know that harmonizing colors is quite um, uh, can be quite tricky at times. Uh, oh, I see the butterfly is literally a beach and waves. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, with the sand here. Um, but let's let's have a quick look. Black and white. This is this will tell you almost immediately what's kind of wrong with with the uh, with the picture. You see how almost all of the values are really really close together. Uh, another way to see this is by using the threshold scale. Um, you see, you see how like all of these values show up like a, they're all right here. Like the whole image, everything that's black is is at this value range. So if you this is this is zero value. So this would be like the absolute pure black, which is kind of the the lines, right? The inked lines. You can almost see the inked lines right here at the, at pure black. This is right in the middle. So this is like the 50% to 60% range of values. And you can see that um, aside from like the eyes and almost this entire creature and the lighter, some of the light parts of the flowers um, are only are brighter than this. So everything sort of falls within this like 50% range, 50 to 60% range of value. And what happens with that is you don't have a lot of uh, you don't have a lot of object. You, you you have a lot of objects competing with each other for attention. So if I go back to your, let me just go back here to the colored version. Um, what I can do, I can duplicate this a couple times, and let's just take this one here, and I'm just going to lighten this one up to say here, and I'm going to close that one. I'm going to lighten this one up just a tiny bit. So about half as much. And let's see here. I'm going to 
I'm going to uh, try to do this the best that I can in a reasonable amount of time. But essentially what I want to do is I want to darken the turtle. So the turtle is going to be sort of the grounding object. It's going to, since you already used a majority of the darker values in the turtle, I'm just going to leave the turtle the darker value. So essentially what I did is I lightened everything and then I'm going to go back to the original turtle. So everything is lighter than what you had it, except for the turtle. And now I will, how do I copy this? No. Now I'll go here. And on this one, um, I think I want this fish to be darker. Um, I want the butterfly to be a little bit darker. So this is going back half step. So still not as dark, because that is as dark as the butterfly is. Now the butterfly is a little bit lighter, but the turtle is darker. Um, and now it has this sort of weird glowy thing, but let me darken a bit of the edges of the flower and the center of the flower a bit. I just want to have the flower a bit lighter in this, this area here as well. Let me bring back that color, darken the center, darken the edges. I just want to try to create a little bit more range in the the values. Uh, this creature, I don't know what to do with this creature, to be honest. It was already pretty light, so I think I'll just bring back its color. It was it was already the brightest object in the in the scene. But even though it's not perfect, you can see that if I go black and white now, second there. Now that it's black and white, you can see that the, the value range still very dark on the turtle, which is fine, but now the other objects stand off of the turtle more. And they're kind of washed out because I literally just lightened the, the object, but you can see those objects more. And actually, I think almost, um, I think maybe this fish here, oh, I can't do it on this one. <laughs> Um, this this fish could also be brighter or or lighter in value in comparison to the turtle. That way he also stands out from the turtle a little bit more. So that's something that it's tricky to do when you're choosing your colors and you're just kind of coloring things. And one way to, to help you uh, solve that problem is uh, to do a grayscale version of your of your drawing first. So since we did multiple sketches, you know, one of the things that you can do, which I did recommend uh, during the process, is um, is once you have your inked design, take a picture of it, scan it or whatever, and then you can print out multiple versions of it, and you can just play with the values. You can also just play with the colors as well, you know, shrink it down to like thumbnail size so you're not spending a lot of time coloring it, but you want to make sure that you you alter the the value ranges there so that the, your objects don't just feel all all bunched together you know what i mean uh, hopefully that that made sense it's a very tricky subject to sort of nail down but um i mean overall you you did good with uh can, all things considering that you didn't like the paper and the uh the colored pencils that you used but i think that you did a really good job on it all right, and Diane, I have your uh, portrait here that we just finished yesterday. And you, you did good on this one too. This is a good project. Um, just uh, I'm just drinking it in right now, just looking, seeing, uh, seeing what things, great texture on the shoes, um, great use of values here, N nice texture on the sweater. I, sleep, I see the, the little things on the sleeves there nicely. Um, yeah, yeah, it looks good. Great bow tie. Uh, it, was it you yesterday that was uh, talking about uh, 
your face looking a little bit too old. Um, yeah, I would say the the upper lip is a bit too thin. Uh, so if I take this color here, because I think you mentioned like his teeth were looking too big. His teeth are a bit big, uh, given the reference photo. And I think that the problem isn't that the teeth are too big, it's that the upper lip is too thin. So I'm just going to thicken his upper lip a little bit. And you can see the way it shrinks his teeth. Um, I'm taking it. I'm taking the teeth off from the top, not the bottom. Um, and then the the smoothness. I don't. I can't tell what paper you used here, but it looks pretty textured. Um, it's a good. It's a good photo. Um, the I know. I know that the drawing is quite small. I know the drawing is quite small, so it is tricky to get into these these small details in the face, but the the main thing that I was showing yesterday, if you remember using uh, the posterize and the threshold tools here in Photoshop, uh, is that a lot of the features, the dark features, the shapes, you want to you want to make sure that you have those as accurate as you can. And then you want to use the the blender to bridge the gap between the dark values and the uh, light values. And one of the things that I can see is like you had a little bit of a bump on his nose that wasn't quite wasn't quite uh, right. And you know you definitely want to try. You definitely need to get the nose right. Like the shape. It's sort of like a bell, sort of it has this bell shape in the reference photo with the, the shadows. And part of that is created from the dark shadow that comes down beside his eye. And then the midtone value, uh, it would be like the, the dark midtone value that comes across his nose and sort of creates this bell shape. Uh, his nose was quite difficult to capture uh, because even I drew it rather small. But that shape right there, and just sort of correcting that that extra lump, you had a little bit of an extra lump. See this lump you have on his nose? Um, just by correcting that, uh, it immediately looks better for his nose. If I zoom out a little bit, um, his nose just looks better. So it was his upper lip that was too thin, that will shrink his teeth, and then a little bit on his nose. Other than that, you. You did a fantastic job. Um, yeah, good job there. All right, nothing more on that one. That was a good one. All right, up next is Garima and um, a lovely graphite portrait. Uh, I don't have the reference photo for this one, but I feel like I've seen this before. I've seen. I feel like I've seen this reference photo. Oh, you you did that on the Fabriano paper. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, it it has a a pretty obvious texture, which you know the 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 more texture your paper has, the less detail you can have at a small scale. So that's just something to remember, because the texture is always going to interfere with your straight lines and and smooth gradients. So um, that's something to keep in mind if you are trying to capture small detail. On an already small drawing like that portrait. Um, so this this portrait here, fantastic values, a very difficult subject, excellent on the water. Um, capturing capturing the value changes that happen where the water is pouring on her face. It, it's it's a very tricky thing to do. Uh, because essentially what you need to do is is draw everything in between the, the streams of running water and all of that. Uh, and then, you, so it's sort of like a puzzle piece with these gaps uh, that you then create water. And you did a really good job on creating the effect. You look at it, it's clear water is being poured on her face. Why is a whole nother discussion, but um, there are still things that uh, 
need a need a little bit of adjustment. Uh, the first thing is the background. Uh, the the background is just too textured. It's too rough. It needs to be smoother. Uh, whatever you do, like you don't want with a with a portrait like this and very like pretty much every portrait you don't ever want the background to distract from the subject especially with a composition like this because the you want the viewer looking at the person the background should not even be a thought in the viewer's mind um, when it's this small part of the composition and even in larger scale compositions where the background has a little bit more of a feature um, you don't ever want it to be distracting from your main subject and here it's just too grainy it's it's the value changes you can see the value changes it's very spotty uh, but the biggest issue is that you see these lines in these directions of the pencil where I imagine you were coloring the background and you even have like this dark line that circles the face awkwardly um, you got to take you got to spend more time on the background this this is caused by wanting to fill the background in too quickly you got to take as much time on the background as as though it's as important as the main subject um, the other thing is uh, I, I'm guessing that you freehanded this, which is impressive within itself because it is, it looks to be quite accurate. Um, but there's a few, there's a few things that tell me that you freehanded this, uh, and the drawing is not, the the drawing. There's no way the drawing is as accurate as the reference photo. Uh, the first thing is the ear. You can see that it's sort of like this this sharp edge for her jaw. Um, I'm not. This doesn't happen in human anatomy for sure. Uh, the ear also looks, the ear looks a little low. Like most ears are, you know, most ears are up here. Her ear feels like it's down here, almost touching the corner of her jaw. It's like right here. Like, it's like right there. Um, it also looks a little bit too close to the side of her cheek. Like her cheekbone is here and it looks like her ear starts a little bit too close. Um, so this jawline, let me just uh, grab a bright color. So this jawline is very unnatural um, and it shows. It shows much too prominently in, in the picture. Uh, and the same is over here. Um, she is far too sunken in uh, on this side of her face. Um, I would say maybe I can maybe I can use the liquify tool. So let me duplicate this layer really quick. And let me see if I can use the liquify tool to to maybe just correct a, a bit of her face because uh, this side this side throws me off quite a bit. And it just it's it's just too thin. It's unnaturally thin. Her her chin maybe can be softened just a bit, but uh, her cheekbone is just razor sharp here. It's about the best I can do there. This needs to be much more rounded. Her ear needs to be, see if I can lift it without making it look too awkward. This part of her jaw needs to come down. It, it's just very square, very square. And, um, women naturally have a softer jawline than men and aliens because her her jawline is very extraterrestrial uh, the other thing is the way the hair is cutting across her neck makes it look like her head is being twisted off her body it's, it's super super awkward all right so here's here's the before 
jawline, very angular, very sharp, and a, a bit odd. And here's here's with a, a softer jawline, rounded, a bit fuller face. The other thing that I need to correct is her lips. The um, her lips, by the way, look really really good. Her teeth are a bit small, like they they look too small for her face, and they're also not not rounded. Like our teeth bend back into our jaw and hers look like they're in a straight line like they, they're just in a straight line uh, i'm not going to try to fix that but i am going to try to fix her lips because oops did not mean to do that uh, her lips are um tilted which is uh, another am i doing something wrong here oh fine um which is another giveaway that you may have freehanded this, which still, again, is very impressive, but a few inaccuracies. Because the center part of her lip, if you see, the center part of her lip is right here, and it goes right up her left nostril, which is not how lips are. Her lips need to be shifted over. This is going to be. This is going to be. This is going to be a little weird. As this needs to come down. This is a bit strange. I can't quite fix her lips, unfortunately. Her her this is this is a bit too much to try to adjust with the liquify tool in a short amount of time. But um there that's that's sort of the twist in her lips that needs to happen. So here's the before and then here's the after. Um so everything else, the shading and, and details and stuff that you put in uh, are fantastic. Very, very good. There, I have no complaints. Do that, but do it on top of a much more accurate drawing. So focus on getting your accurate drawing first before you go in there with the shading. Um, because uh, putting that much effort into the project and then having the, her lips crooked, having her face way too angular, um, you're just, um, you know, you're just not going to get the, the results that you deserve with the time that you put in. So make sure your drawing is accurate. Other than that, you did a fantastic job. Thank you for the submission. Up next is Cherry. Um, and this was the uh, House Moving Castle project that uh, we just finished up. And I, when you submitted it, I was like, you can't, you, you can't submit my own artwork, Cherry. Uh, and then, and then, as I looked at, it, I was like, that is not mine <laughs> because your clouds are much different. Um, you, you did so good on this project. I, I honestly, I. I have nothing but praise to say on this project. It's flawless, like it's so good. If you want me to nitpick, there's three-ish things that I can say. There's there's barely three things that I can say because this is so good. Um, the first, the first is the edge of the clouds. The edge of the clouds is just a bit too sharp and I think it would just look better if they were blended into the sky a little bit. Um, I'm not going to do that, uh, but um, actually maybe I can do that really quick. Maybe I just uh, give it a blur and then let's blur it. Let's do this, this. Is that softening? Yeah, that looks like it's softening. Maybe I need to blur it even more. But having that softer edge of the clouds makes them feel more cloud-like. Um, so that's one thing that I would perhaps consider adjusting. Uh, the other thing is um, some color tone, because I remember there was some orange. There was there was like this orangey color in the clouds and on the mountains on the sun side of the mountains 
So there's a little bit of that orange that I think uh, should be in the clouds and on the mountains. And then uh, some more red. There was like this uh, nice reddish color uh, throughout the castle that I feel like is just missing. A little bit, a little bit of that reddish tone. It kind of creates that that rusty look, and that's that's kind of what we needed, what we needed to capture um, in the in the castle colors. Uh, and it also works really well with all of the green that was in the castle. So there's just like a hint of red um, and a hint of orange, and like solving this weird fluffy shape of the clouds against the sky. There was just something a little um, a little strange with the, the transition from the cloud to the sky and then some of the color tone. But I mean, that's, that's being nitpicky. It looks perfect just like this. Like, you don't have to do anything. It looks perfectly fine just like this. Um, and um, so you, I had to nitpick. But super, super good job on that. And then Cherry, your uh, your portrait here, um, you did good job on this one as well. Very very nice. Um, you got the shape of the nose nicely. Um, the so the dark again the teeth are a bit too big, which is understandable. Um, they're teeny tiny. It's hard to to get them the right size, but they are too big. Uh, the dark shadows you need to. Uh, you need to get those dark shapes in the face a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper. I know you can go darker because I can see your bow tie right here. So I know you can go darker on these, uh, in particular, the smile line, the upper lip, the smile lines over here. And then you need to also soften those transitions, in particular, right here under this lip and the way this uh, smile line comes down, it's just too harsh of a, of a, of a line. Too harsh of a line it needs to be softened into the shadow of the chin um, and uh, the knees you you drew these knees in a little bit a little bit too much like they're they're too they're too perfect you know what I mean they they look like they they look like like shells on the legs like they're too obvious i think that's i think that's maybe the word um so it's just that transition between those dark shadows that sort of shape the knee they need to be a little less subtle i mean a little more subtle um the highlight on the top side of the knee is is sort of what uh is causing that a bit but just uh Sorry, I'm just grabbing some, trying to hide those kneecaps a little bit because they're, they just stand out a bit too much, uh, something like that maybe. Not quite like that. They're still a bit standing out too much, but it's, it's closer. It's closer. Uh, also, uh, there's some darker shapes on the shoes that you could probably bring in. Because um, right now, the skin on his legs and the color of his shoes uh, way too close in the value. The, the shoes were like a light gray, and then it had that sort of speckled, uh, like salt and pepper speckly uh, texture to them. The shoes are lighter than his skin. And right now, down at his ankles, the value is far too close, which tells you either the shoes are too dark or his skin is too light. Um, my guess, it's a little bit of both. But aside from that, um, it's really good. Also, uh, this was a drop shadow. If you wanted to do the drop shadow and the, the sunlight is, the sunlight's coming from the left. So the, the shadow comes out this way. The shadow comes out from that direction. So um, having it, Having the the drop shadow come out this way doesn't doesn't make any sense. Um, so it's better it's better to let that slide off to the left. Is stop at his his toes here. 
because there's nothing in front of the there's nothing in front of the light to cause a shadow on that part. Uh, and if you wanted to do the ground, because I when I was looking at this, I thought, oh well, maybe she just wanted to like give the ground a color. Uh, then you can't stop at the heels like this. You need to take this color and you need to go back here. You need to create sort of a an oval of the ground underneath him if you want to create the illusion that that's the ground and not a drop shadow. Otherwise, um, you need to follow the rules of the light and only have the light where, or only have the shadow where a shadow can exist. Um, other than that, uh, I mean, great job. Um, yeah, it looks, it looks really good. You could probably go a little bit darker on the mid-tones on the sweater also. Yeah. Because the difference between the mid-tone and the shadow here is a bit too stark, and it's giving you that sort of... It, it looks less like wrinkles and more like a design. It looks like he has like a sweater that has tribal design or something like that. And the problem that's causing that is that it's too sharp of a distinction between the, the mid-tone or just like the regular color of the sweater and the really dark shadows. So you have to soften that transition between those dark shadows and those light areas or those lighter areas of the sweater. And that will get rid of that sort of tribal look of design. All right, up next is Lisa A. She has this beautiful charcoal portrait. Um, I was looking at this one also before the stream a little bit, uh, just thinking, uh, what the heck am I going to say about this portrait? Because it's done so well. Um, really, uh, technically, there's not anything I'd say you need to improve on. The shape of his nose, uh, this, this uh, hard line down here, his nose shape, uh, I think his nose shape is is off a hair uh, because the uh, either his nose shape is off a little bit or he's very unfortunate because he has like this very blown up. It almost looks like a it almost looks like a puppet. Almost looks like a puppet nose. Uh, grab bright color to show you what the shape uh, what the shape translates to based off of the the lighting that you've created because it comes down and it has this very just wide it just looks like this like that's the shape that you've created in the nose and i think it comes from this hard shadow that you put on the side um, and also this edge i just don't buy it it just feels too wide. It just feels it feels unnaturally wide, and I think maybe maybe I can use the um, the liquify tool again uh, to try to alleviate his gigantic nose. So I think that this line needs to just come in just a tiny bit. Like, I don't want to do too much, but also this shadow, this shadow needs to be brought in. His nose is just, it's way too wide, especially up here in between his eyebrows. There's just no way. And this is, that's a little bit better, but still not perfect because the the changing values here also establishes the shape of his nose. All right, that's, I mean, that's a little bit better. His, his nose is a bit thinner, but not overly thin. Um, and that, that nose looks more natural than this one because this one just looks like it's, it's being blown up with air a bit too much. Uh, so that's one small thing. Uh, the other thing goes back to when I was talking about uh, sort of the vignette shape that you create around your subjects. So the, this vignette shape that you have here around him uh, is not, it's not working. Because remember, I was, I was explaining that, so, so you see this distance that you've created here 
at the, between his hat and the top, but then over here, it's like right at the edge of the hat. So you need to widen this. Don't be afraid to like bring this color out more. That is too much. Let me tone that down a little bit. So by bringing this dark tone out a bit more, and not having this edge right against the brim of the hat. Just rounding it off a bit. It just, it feels fuller, it just looks better. Um, so be careful with these, these odd shapes that you create around your subject. You want them to be, you want them to be somewhat symmetrical. They don't always have to be perfectly symmetrical. Uh, I didn't want to imply that when I was talking about it earlier, but they you do want them balanced with your photo. You want them balanced with your subject. Um, so don't just like create an awkward line around your subject when you do this vignetting. Um, make it a little bit smoother, make it fuller if you need to, and don't ever let it come up to this the, the edge. So if you're gonna have all this space covered for the background, don't just stop like if they're wearing a, a fancy hat or something. Don't let that edge be right next to your subject the way, the way that you had it there. Have it a little bit more fuller and you can see the difference is, the difference is pretty significant. Here it almost makes it feel top heavy. It feels very unbalanced. It feels like almost the hat is the main subject and as soon as you fill in the rest of it it sort of feels more comfortable it feels complete right um uh sorry i've been talking for a really long time i haven't asked if anybody had any questions um if anybody does have any questions and if you have asked a question and i didn't respond to it because I haven't been paying even a second to chat, which I apologize for. I'm just like in the zone here. Uh, feel free to ask your questions again. And I'll try to uh, I'll try to make sure I don't miss them. Okie dokie. Uh, other than that, fantastic portrait, Lisa. You did a you did a really good job. All right, up next is Barbara. She has this lovely acrylic painting. Um, probably uh probably sat down and painted this in one sitting. I imagine, uh, sort of a la prima, kind of kind of look. Um, and I I like the I actually like this painting a lot. I like the um the depth that you were that you created here you you show you show understanding on how to create that that depth in your scenes um and i i snagged the reference photo uh, to put side by side because uh even though even though you use the reference photo i don't think that you're going for a one for one i don't think you were going for like i want to try to get the most realistic tree scene um but you were trying to capture this sort of unique twisted windy shape of the tree and that's probably what attracted you to this reference and you wanted to recreate it um so here's a few things uh first uh, you're in chat aren't you barbara i think i saw you uh, if you're still there tell me if i'm correct but you painted around this tree i believe i'm seeing brush strokes that go around this tree, which I am guessing that you painted the tree last, but you left the tree blank. So you you painted everything around the, the sketch of the tree, leaving the tree part blank. That's my guess. And the reason I'm guessing that is because I can see a little bit of this halo uh, effect around the tree branches and I can see the brush strokes that go along the tree and that's that's something that's very easily avoidable with such subjects so if you wanted um, 
So if you wanted to leave this tree blank, I would say there's there's one best option, which I personally love to use, and that's using masking film or masking tape. Um, if you don't, if you want to avoid the subject, but you need to paint around it, find a way to cover it, or find a way to add it after the fact accurately. So, to the the my favorite way to do it with paint is to uh, lay down tape. So, just lay down regular painter's tape across the entire canvas. So, you know, I lay down one strip of tape, I lay down one strip of tape right next to it and so forth. And then I draw my main subject onto it. I draw my main subject right onto the tape. And then I simply cut out using a craft knife uh, the, the shapes that I've drawn on there. And I peel up the background. So I leave the main subject covered with the tape and then you can just focus on the background. You don't have to worry about, you don't have to worry about the, your main subject. Now, that might not be something that you want to do if you just want to sit down and paint something really quickly. That's, that's absolutely true because painting or using the tape, sketching it out, cutting it out, and all of that stuff, that does take a, a decent amount of time. Uh, now, if you're as proficient at as, as I am, then it doesn't take really much time at all. But if you don't want to do that, then you have to trust yourself to add that subject after the fact. Because you want to, you, you want to be able to approach the background with, with subjects, especially something like this. You want to be able to approach the, that, back, that background like unopposed. You don't want to have to fight around your main subject uh, because I think that you would have gotten the the effect, the depth in this painting a lot better. And that's really the only thing, the only thing that I think you need to improve on in this in this painting. Um, so you have this bright sky, which perfectly matches the bright sky. Uh, you have some of the desaturated uh, hills in the background you can see that your color is a little bit off uh, because of the atmosphere being blue the color of objects start to match the sky more as you get further away but let's just say we use your color um, I think this needs to be just faded more faded more and now that step from the sky to this is a little bit softer. And then, so one thing to, to remember when you're doing landscapes, um, the, the rule is that the further the object, the lower the value and the lower the saturation. So as the object gets further away, it gets lighter in value and the saturation goes down. So the, the color intensity decreases as you get farther away and so the main the main subjects here this tree and some of this foliage that's closest to you these are the only objects in the scene that deserve any uh, any real color any of your brightest most rich colors everything else is much further away so the saturation needs to drop in particular, all of this area here, you can see that the bright green that you have in the scene is very close to the bright green here, but you also have all of this bright green back here along this hill. And if again, if I just take this color, maybe, maybe uh, go here with it, so not as light, but I'm just going to wash out this part of your painting a bit and what that's going to do is it's going to pull out some of that bright green saturation and now it brings the tree closer forward and it pushes this hill further back and now the only bright stuff is this close-up foliage and the tree itself 
Um, the tree itself also deserves a little bit of attention as far as the um, the bright part of the tree. You're missing a lot of the shadow if you use this gray here. You can see, kind of see just using this gray right over the left side of the tree because it's a bit too blank. And with a, some of that gray in that white area, it kind of creates more of a three-dimensional rounded shape of the tree. Uh, it makes the white part of the tree also stand out a bit better. Uh, but those, those are the things that you want to focus on when you're doing anything landscape like that that has things far in the distance. You want to make sure that you're getting that value and saturation level for the, for the space correct. Because uh, even if you alter the colors, you still need to make sure you are following the rules of saturation and contrast or uh, value um, in order to create that depth in your painting. But other than that, it's, it's, it still came out really good and you did a good job on it. Um, but again, you want to focus on just the background and then paint the tree on top of it. Draw the tree with paint. Uh, if, you, if you paint in the background and everything, you know, you can, and you let it dry completely. Uh, if you draw on the tree with some paint and you don't like it, you can just wipe it off. Uh, and Barbara, you also sent in this painting. And um, I really like this one. Yeah, I really liked this painting here. Uh, it's really cool. Uh, I like that you, you know, you altered this scene a bit. Um, the, uh, the drawing looks pretty accurate. It looks free-handed, um, but because you used sort of a spatial measurement, you got a lot of the, the features very close. The fence is a little bit higher. Um, as you don't see this bush here. Like if you delete the van, there's this bush sitting here. And then also the top of the gate. Actually, I don't even see the pole that you created here. Um, if you, even if you go off of this pole here, well, I guess it sort of matches, but this, this top side of the fence is much higher. So if you lowered, if you, if you kept the fence, the actual height that it is, uh, you'd see a little bit more of this house, I guess it is. And then you'd also see that this bush, you'd see some of this bush here. Um, there's really just one thing that uh, I think you can work on, and that is creating sort of this sensation of light, because right now it's very two-dimensional. I think that's I think that's sort of the biggest uh, biggest issue. But so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this in. I'm going to go to multi multiply. I'm just going to darken your whole painting. I'm going to darken your whole painting, and then I'm going to bring back your original painting. That's what I'm going to do. So here's here's the original reference photo. I don't I don't want the reference photo to be changed. So here's the original reference photo. So what I've done is I've just darkened your entire painting, right? Just just your whole your whole painting is dark. Maybe I can even I can just do this. Now, now, literally just your painting. That, that works better for everybody. So darkening your whole painting, uh, I'm going to just bring back some of the light. So on this side of the house, um, I'm going to do the sky. I'm going to bring back all of the sky color. I don't... I don't want to darken the sky. Oops. You might be thinking that 
it would have been easier to just do it do the shadows instead and you're probably right <laughs> probably be easier if i did it with just the shadows um i'm going to brighten up this whole building except for this underside this side here um i do oh you know i'll do this whole scene here this is all in sunlight I'm probably making this a lot harder than I need to. But essentially, I just want to show what adding a couple shadows would have done to this scene otherwise. Uh, because here, everything is very two-dimensional. There's no real sensation of light. Uh, and then here, you have the light showing a bit more. Um, the other thing is this, now I remember why I did it, this this building over here, it has a gradient. See how it's like darker in the corner here? It has a bit of a gradient. I think um, that would have went a long way. Uh, the size of these windows is a little, is a little off. They're much thinner, but you know, that's nitpicking. Um, it's it's really just about the light because the the fence is much the fence should be much darker because if you if you have it super bright like this and you have everything behind it also super bright um it that's what gives it that two-dimensional look so you need you need to create those value changes you need to have something really dark to compete with the something that's really bright and if all of these buildings are really bright, then your fence needs to be kind of darker like yours is. Because the reason yours is dark is because there's no light hitting it. It's sort of in the shadow. Um, I imagine the sunlight is like in front of you a bit based on this shadow on this side of the building and also these shadows over here. Um, the sunlight is on the other side of your fence, which is why the back side of your fence is uh, so much darker. If you were to in, invert that, I guess you could have made your fence a little bit whiter and then had these buildings darker. But uh, I think that I don't think that would work really well because um, that doesn't make sense with the sunlight. Because if that side, if the side you're looking at or the face is is bright, then that means the sun's behind you and the sun would be shining on all those buildings and they'd also be bright. So you have to. Um, you have to be careful the way that you change light and you want to make sure that even though when you look at these colors they they appear very flat uh, you want to make sure that you get those values changed so that you can still have those the the sensation of light happening in the scene All right. Um, other than that, really good, really good. Up next, uh, final project is Tina. She did this uh, adorable little colored pencil portrait. One second, I need some water. And this is a really great, really great pet portrait. Um, I don't have a lot to say about this one because it is so well done. Uh, I do have a question though. Where are the whiskers? I, I, I feel like you may have forgot the whiskers, like a little bit. I could be wrong, but I, f I feel like there should be whiskers. That's the one thing that sort of threw me off um, was that I wasn't seeing whiskers. The other thing is, the biggest like the biggest hurdle with furry animals is the transition of direction in the fur and this is this portrait here is a perfect example of how difficult how difficult it is because uh, you did you did a fantastic job on the face 
all all of this is just perfect except for the the lack of whiskers <laughs> uh hey there tina yeah everything i'd say everything here is perfect uh looks amazing looks fantastic um just uh the the missing whiskers potentially the missing whiskers i could i could be mistaken maybe the dog just doesn't have whiskers usually i have at least like little black ones or something um the fur direction a lot of people actually struggle with this because the the way the dog's fur swoops out around the eye it it sort of goes like this and then it changes direction right here and you captured that really well so this is all the fur direction it sort of wraps around the eye like that uh, and a lot of people usually struggle with the part uh, in between the eyes when the dog is facing you because you have these two parts of the fur going together and you get sort of this point and making that point look natural and not awkward in a drawing uh, a lot of people struggle with that but uh, the other section is right here this is another very tricky transition spot of the fur because it transitions very strangely into the ear and it's also changing length so there's a lot happening with the fur in this area and i correct me if i'm wrong tina but i think you may have struggled a little bit on this section and in potentially even rushed it and and sort of gave up a little bit because your fur your your quality of fur on this part and even even here uh is really good like it, it's it's really really good looking fur it genuinely looks like fur the colors blend really well the contrast uh the subtleness within the white fur looks really good but here the the tricky part of those transitions um i feel like they they got a little bit of the better of you um even so like the dark like the dark value here of the fur oops didn't mean to copy that that you have right here i feel like you're still you got the energy you're you're feeling good about the drawing it, and then it sort of grays out like you can see the difference in value between what you have and and what you have over here uh, i feel like it got a little bit too gray and it feels like the paper isn't quite as covered so the the thing that makes this section look so nice is that i feel like you're covering the paper completely and then here you're leaving a bit too much of the paper showing through and this this section to the viewer uh, since I don't have the reference photo, I actually can't tell you what part of the ear this is supposed to 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 be. And these parts are really, really tricky. Uh, the two pieces of advice that I can give you as far as approaching these complex areas uh, is to you you can turn the the image black and white because when you're looking at it in color, you can sort of clearly more clearly see exactly what's happening there if you turn it black and white you you have to use the texture and the values to figure out what's going on there so you can look at it that way to help you identify the dark shapes that you need to fill in and uh, that brings me to the second part is just focus on the identifiable shapes uh, starting with the darkest values first which it looks like you did you sort of have these sort of squiggly dark shapes uh, by identifying those first and filling them in that can really get you started but it feels like you didn't quite you didn't quite mesh those those weird black shapes those weird dark shapes into the rest of the values um, the way that it looks and that's that's really the the time consuming and tricky part uh, oh you posted the reference photo is it on facebook let me uh let me grab that really quick hold on one second
Let me uh, let me go to Facebook really quick, and I'll snag the reference photo. Because I'll be able to tell you more uh, effectively on on how to approach that. Uh, where did you post it? find it it's in the comments I'll reload it maybe that's the problem Comments, the comments on the, um, right, the, the comments for the art critique. That's what you're talking about? Oh, wait, did you, oh, you replied. Okay, there it is. I got it. Oh, yeah. Okay, I see. I got it here. All righty. That's, that's a, that's a difficult reference photo. I'll tell you what, that is not an easy reference photo to work from. Yeah. You 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 made you made it look much, much better. Your 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 drawing looks a lot better than the reference photo. So at least you got that. I mean, I got no I got no complaints now. Uh so here this this area here, the biggest issue is that your value changes are too too distinct funny enough um so if i just grab let's say this color here i'm just going to go right over top of the light stuff now obviously i'm sort of erasing the texture but the biggest problem is that your values are too they're too far apart so taking this, taking this dark color, darkening up this black part of the fur a bit more, um, dark widening these shapes. Essentially, the the problem is that the colors are just too bright. Yeah, I, that's the that's the biggest issue. The colors uh, for those that weird part of the ear is that your the light tan color is just too bright the, this color here it's just way too bright because you can see that this color oops this color here just a quick comparison from the reference photo and then this color here you can see they're not that far apart in value but on yours, on yours, you have this color for the light part. And then you have this color for the dark part. So that's the problem that you have, is that your value difference is way too wide. And so simply by using your darker fur color, maybe even black, or just a dark brown, to layer over top of that. I don't know if you still have this piece and if you're if you want to to make any changes to it, but that alone will fix the issue. Same thing with this part of the ear. It's just too whoa, that's that's too <laughs> that's too much. Let me drop that down a bit. Uh, it's just too bright. It's just too bright. So yeah. There was there was no actual technical problem. It was just that the value differences between the the lights and the darks um, was uh, was too distinct. It was too far apart. Um, 
you can't really see any whiskers on this dog, can you? Yeah, you can't really see any. Usually they're, I, I guess I can see one or two, sort of like right here, but um, yeah, not clearly. Maybe, maybe this one, maybe this is a whisker hanging down here. Uh, but yeah, I can see why you don't have whiskers. I can see why you don't have whiskers. Okay, so I want to get to the other thing about your your drawing here that I wanted I wanted to talk about. Um, now that I see the reference photo, I get what this is because before before I saw the reference photo, I was like, oh, that's such a good that's such a good uh, color pencil drawing, and I was like, but what the heck is this? What is this stuff? I was like, get rid of it. That doesn't look that what is that? I was looking at I was like, is he like holding up a paw? What is he doing? I had no idea what this was in the picture. This I was so confused. I was like, what is that? Why is there fur here? I was very curious. I was gonna ask you about that, but now that I have the reference photo, I can see that you put in this fur here underneath his chin. Don't do that. Don't, definitely don't do that, um, because that looks better. This is, so you took the pose and you, you put in like his back that was showing, but here it looks like he's kind of sitting and looking up at his owner or whatever. Like he, now he's just sitting looking up at his owner and there's no, there's no guessing as to what on earth this is. Because I was like, is it his, is it his, tail coming up from behind him and or is his paw out i thought it was like a paw like he was like holding a paw or something like something like this i i didn't know what it was so um when you don't be afraid to cut things off don't be afraid to cut things off um from the reference photo because i think that if you would have left this blank and just had paper uh one thing you could have done is you could probably shifted the head over just a tad um, to center it a bit more uh, because then you wouldn't have this this thing here um, but it just looks better just isolating the head and now he has a nice clear chin you can see his chin and it just makes him stand out more from the background um, because at the end of the day uh, you want to you always want to ask yourself does this help like what does this do part do since you're since you're cutting it off there anyway you're not showing the rest of his body what is having this part do for your drawing and the 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 easy answer is that it just doesn't do anything except confuse the viewer uh, because um, I didn't I couldn't figure out what it was because based on the head like trajectory it just looks like he's sitting there but I didn't realize that he was laying down with his head turned this way, and then that was his back. So uh, you want to be you want to be careful with uh, with adding too much from the reference photo. Yeah, you want to be too you want to be a little careful with that. Uh, how to add shadows? That's that's a tricky subject. Uh, not something that I can explain in a single sitting. <laughs> uh, shadows is really just about uh, understanding the shapes that the light would cause if you're creating the shadows sort of from your imagination or if you're replicating it from a reference photo. It's all about understanding uh, the value difference between one area versus the other. And just making those those value changes in your in your work. Um, anyways, that was the last project. Uh, Tina, you did a really fantastic job on this portrait, by the way. Uh, so don't take anything that I said uh, too harshly. And I, I hope that um, I hope that you found the information helpful. In fact, I hope I hope everybody found something information uh, in something informative about. Uh, uh, about their artwork uh, throughout today's live stream. Uh, I really enjoy doing these these live critiques. I love looking at your guys' artwork, and uh, even though 
you know, I scroll through and I see your artwork on Facebook when you post it and stuff. I don't usually uh, get the time to to comment on it throughout throughout the week and weekend and everything like that. So I, I enjoy getting to look at everybody's work in one sitting and talking about it and giving you guys feedback so you can move forward and improve your improve your work. And uh, you know, I've known I've known many of you for for several years now. I've been watching you grow as artists. I've been watching you get better. Everybody is continuously getting better and it's it's really it's really fun to see the evolution of your work and the improvements uh, that you make over over sometimes very short periods of time. So thank you for that. Um, if you're watching this and you don't know how to get your pictures in the critique session, uh, you simply join the Unmasked Family Facebook group. I have a link for that below. Um, I do these critiques the first Friday of every month. So once a month, uh, I just post I just post a thread in the Facebook group uh, announcing it usually four or five days before uh, the live stream actually takes place. And then you just post your work there in the comments. Um, and the other thing is if you if you want to learn more from me on a regular basis, I do live stream Monday through Thursday in the art club. It is my uh, platform on my website. Um, so if, if you want to do that, I have a link for the art club in the description as well. Uh, you can join that and we do uh, many of the projects and pieces that you've seen in the critiques here. Those are projects that we've did in the art club. Um, and I live stream those projects from beginning to end. I talk you through the entire process. I give you the reference photo. I give you the, the line art and everything that you need uh, to complete the project. So. Uh, hopefully I'll see a few new faces over in the art club because um, uh, next next Wednesday we're going to be starting a new colored pencil project and we're already in the middle of a pastel project currently. So anyways, that is going to do it for today. Thank you guys so much for coming by and hanging out. Really, really appreciate it. And um, hope you have a fantastic weekend. And I'll see you next time. Take care. Peace.